Welcome to Zim's Beer Review, a YouTube and podcast production presented by Anchor.fm. What's up, everybody? Thanks for tuning in. Episode 48, we have episode number two in the Hop Valley Brewing series that we're going to be doing over the next few weeks. Um, if you checked out the video title, podcast title, or just looking at the video on screen, we are doing Bambino Stash today. Bambino Stash is, um, I guess you could call it like the little brother to Bubble Stash, which we reviewed last week. I'll get a little bit more into the Bubbles or the Bambino Stash, sorry, specifically, um, and kind of show you a little bit more around the Hot Valley website today again. Um, so yeah, this is episode two of the Hot Valley Brewing Series. Um, you guys are familiar with Hot Valley. We kind of went in a, a little bit in depth on them last week when we did the Bubble Stash, and we'll do a little bit extra today as well. Um, I'm excited to try this beer. This is another IPA. If you didn't know, I believe all of their stash line, we'll call it, um, the Bubble Stash, Bambino Stash, and then a few of the ones we're going to be doing next week and the week after. We got the Cryo Stash and the Mango Stash. All of those are IPAs. So this is just number two that we're doing. I'm doing these in kind of no particular order. I wanted to start with uh, Bubble Stash just simply because it's kind of like their main staple, their first one they did, and go from there. I'm s- I'm going to slowly work towards the heavier beer that they have, which is the Cryo Stash. That'll prob- probably be our last one that we do in the Stash series. So um, just to kind of work through their, their line of Stash beers. But anyways, today, Bambino Stash. Let's get right into this. So as, as usual, all of these are in cans. Not all of Hop Valley's beers are in cans. Um, it seems like most of them are, but they definitely do still have beers in bottles. And I think they actually have, I, th- I think they have all of their beers in cans and bottles. Cause I do remember specifically having a bubble stash years ago out of a bottle. And last week we had it out of a can. So I don't think that they're one of the, the breweries that goes, goes only cans versus only bottles or one or the other. Um, I would think they probably have more in cans just because that's kind of the way that craft beer is going, but I don't know. I guess we'll find out. Um, so yeah, Bambino stash here, very clear. I'd say lighter in color than the bubble stash was slightly, um, not it kind of has a hazy look to it. It's not hazy. It's definitely a clear beer. Uh, it's been filtered for sure, but it kind of has, I guess, carbonation throughout Smells very good. Smells citrusy. That's a good beer too. It does taste similar to Bubble Stash. In an odd way, this is like... It tastes um, like a melon maybe. Kind of hard to pinpoint exactly that flavor, but it's got... It's like a citrus melon, I guess. Kind of like a little bits like orange maybe in there, lemon, something kind of like that, I'd say. Um, it actually tastes slightly more bitter than Bubble Stash, although the, the IBUs on this one I think are 50 IBUs. Oh, just kidding, 20. I thought it was 50. Never mind. Um, it tastes more bitter though. Um, to me than bubble stash did. And I think they're relatively close. We'll have to, we'll check when we go to the website preview here, but I'm pretty sure they're similar in, in bitterness values. Uh, but this one comes across as slightly more bitter. I think the bubble stash was slightly smoother of a beer. This tastes more like how I was describing in the previous episode with, with bubble stash that it's a super easy drinking, I would call it like a session IPA because it's it's almost like a, a pale ale more than an India pale ale with, where you expect that bitterness. It was very easy drinking. This one, however, you definitely get more of that IPA sense. So if if the 
Bitterness is something that you aren't sure about. I would say start with the bubble stash. I think it's less bitter. Taste wise, I would and I think this the Bambino stash actually has lower IBUs, but just straight across taste wise, the Bambino stash tastes hoppier and more bitter than the bubble stash did. So for for what it's worth, if you're interested in in these IPAs, um, this one does taste slightly more bitter. But that's not to say that this is a bitter IPA. By no means. If if you are well versed in the IPA game, we'll call it, you're gonna know the IPAs are far more bitter than either of these beers are in general. Um, most IPAs, you know they are when you smell them. This one. This does not smell like an IPA, like you would expect an IPA to smell. It it smells and looks like a pale ale. This one tastes 50% IPA, where the bubble stash was probably more on like the 25%. Like it's there, but if they called it a pale ale, I'd believe them. This one, if they called it a pale ale, you'd know it's a, a, a bitter pale ale, but it's light in comparison to um, pretty much any other I, IPA you would have. So now I will kind of show you, we'll go back to the Hop Valley Brewing website. Their website is hopvalleybrewing.com. We'll do a little swipe here. Okay, here we have hopvalleybrewing.com. This is their website. Uh, when, you, when you go here, um, their beers are on the left over here. You can't really see it on the screen. It's just slightly cut off, but uh, we'll expand their menu here. Um, beers you can go straight into here for the purposes of us. We're going to dive right into these beers and get into this. So this is not all of their beers. This is just some on here. I got to, I got to find this one stash exotic. I got to get this one. I, I'm going to have to reach out to hot Valley and see what the story is behind this. If you've watched tiger King, that's a <laughs> awesome name. <laughs> a beach blonde ale sounds perfect for summer. And look at that can. I mean, it's if if you're listening to the audio version of this, it's like tiger stripe, blue and pink with leopard print hops in the middle. It says stash, stash exotic, and it even has a mustache going around it. That's that's awesome. But anyways, we're gonna scroll down through here, um, see some of the other ones we're gonna be trying in the future. Here's the mango stash, citrus mistress, and cryo stash. All are coming in the in the coming weeks. Um, we're gonna keep going, keep going down but wait there's more here we go the bambino stash ipa so we'll click on this this is the one we're drinking today the abv is only five if i remember correct uh bubble stash was actually over six we could probably check that we'll go back real quick i'm fairly certain that bubble stash was over six um six percent and it was six point two percent so over a full percent lower alcohol content on this Bambino stash, which if you're familiar with IPAs, kind of surprising to me. Um, generally speaking, when you have a hoppier beer and that high bitterness taste, and like I said, neither of these are high, you expect a higher alcohol content. That's just kind of how they are. Um, IPAs in general have a higher alcohol by volume. This Bambino stash only 5%. That's, I mean, that's right in line with a lot of ales and just general lagers that are out there right now. Um, I would say the average IPA, you're looking at the 6 to 8%. Oh, 8 would be high, but I'd say maybe 55 to 7.5% um, generally. So this is on the lower end, low IBUs. Oh, so tangerine that's what they say. The little tangerine baby brother of the stash family. So I thought citrusy melon, I don't know. Maybe it's a stretch. Tangerine, that's close. So they're saying that this is a throwback to 2011's original bubble stash. They upgraded the original hop hash to the cryo hops, which we mentioned in the previous episode. Something to do with um, harvesting the hops in sub-zero temperatures. I don't know. I'm not fully versed in the, the cryo hop realm but i'm pretty sure that little registered trademark there that's something they do specific um but they kept it 
the same barely bitter, easy drinking IPA that you've grown to love. So yeah, it is barely bitter, more bitter that, uh, than the bubble stash, I think, but definitely, um, I would still classify this as a barely bitter IPA. Definitely easy drinking. I, I agree with that sentiment that they have there. It's kind of right in line with a session IPA. Like you, um, you can sit down and drink three or four of these. If you're feeling crazy six, I never do that ever, never. But, um, yeah, so it's a very good, it's a very good beer. Super smooth. Uh, Hop Valley Brewing makes great stuff. I've loved everything that I've had from them so far. Um, I've had a few beers of theirs back when I lived in Oregon in Eugene. I had visited their uh, brewery a few times. It was before I was fully into the the beer world, brewing my own beer, definitely before the podcast had started. So I hadn't really, I guess I didn't really know I was, what I was looking for when I would go. Um, I would just get a pale ale or a blonde, not really considering what I had. So I've, I've had some beers from them that I don't remember what they were for sure. So now going through their beers again, where I haven't had their stuff in probably, oh, maybe six, seven years, um, with a new appreciation of beers, what goes into it, what goes into a good beer, how you even make beer, what hops can do, what different grains can do. It's, it's interesting to, and exciting to try their beers again. So I'm really loving this stash line of beers. Um, I have buddies that I talk to every single day that live uh, back in Eugene and in Oregon and the surrounding areas. They love the Hot Valley beers. Bubble Stash and Cryo Stash are some of their favorite beers um, when I asked them what they thought. So I'm super excited to continue trying their stuff. And I expressed the same the same opinions that they do. These are really good, easy drinking, light IPAs. Um, if you are interested in trying and getting into IPAs, I think that the Bubble Stash and the Bambino Stash would both be good entry level IPAs to the to the world of IPAs. Neither one is super bitter. Neither one is super strong in hop flavor. Um, it's a good transition from a pale ale to your more stout IPAs that you might find with some other breweries. And maybe we'll find with Hop Valley in the future. We shall see. So anyways, everybody, thank you for tuning in for another episode. This one was um, very exciting. I'm going to finish this beer here. And um, I would like to invite everybody to please tune into the um, the YouTube channel that we have. It's at Zim's Beer Review here. You can find us on YouTube. All of our reviews are posted. Um, You can check out the website preview if you're listening to the audio only version and are interested in seeing what we're showing on screen. I highly encourage you to check out um, Zim's beer review on YouTube. The links will be in the description. They'll be in the description of the audio version of the podcast as well. So just click through there. Um, I also encourage everybody to find us on Instagram. Uh, This is where we will be posting all of our new um, new reviews that we're doing. Um, sometimes we'll, we'll show teasers for what's going to be coming out. Um, and yeah, it's a good way to keep up and, and know what ones are out there. And if you don't want to have to tune into every episode, Hey, maybe you only want to listen to IPAs. Maybe you only like stouts, whatever it may be, follow the Instagram. You can check us on there. And if you see a photo and a a picture of a beer that interests you or a brewery that you've heard of, click the link and, uh, come check out the podcast. So Anybody or anyways, thanks everybody for tuning in for another episode. And um, next week we're gonna have another Hop Valley Brewery beer, um, maybe one in the middle between between the Hop Valleys. We'll try and break it up a little bit. But um, tune in next, probably next Thursday for the next um, Hop Valley Brewing beer. So as always, thanks everybody, and we'll see you in a few days. <laughs>